So, I, I don't know. Do you want to? I'm all over the place. Yeah. I'm, you, should we just? Yeah, no. Yeah, fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ow! Everything's wrong. <laughs> Everything is wrong. I can't even open the beer. Holy fragrance, Batman. <laughs> that is a... Uh, that, that hit me right in the face. Hello! And welcome to Flicks in the Six. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony Costanzo. With me, forever and always, the man, the myth, the lumpy, Alessandro Bailsi. Say hello, Al. That was predictable. I mean, what are you going to do? This is to the brim, almost. Not yes. really. Close enough. Mine, uh, I, well, I drank one out of this earlier, so I had the contact points of the glass. It didn't... It didn't really work so well. Oh. It's okay. That's all right. You've got, about, you've got about seven feet of head on that beer. Um, seven feet of head. Okay. <laughs> seven feet. <laughs> uh, this is a very special episode. One that we've talked is about it? doing for a very long time. Yeah. I would say I'm glad that we're finally doing it. You offered to throw me out of your house earlier. I said I don't think we can see each other anymore. <laughs> That's no, how that went No, I think out. you said... I don't know if I want to see you again. Right, right. <laughs> I was... You brought something horrendous on me today. Something that, like you've said, we've discussed off-air, on-air. I surprised you by offering to do it today. Right? What what I... You did. And what I think is going to happen is by the end of this, we'll be okay. Yeah. Because we'll have left Cath- through the Catharsis. trauma. We'll, we'll get it out I think so. the world. Um, Wait, by the way, those of you who are listening right now, we're not entirely sure when that is yet. This is going to be a fun yeah. little surprise. This is a little... Uh... We, we're recording this in June. Yep. And, it's, and it's probably coming out in December. <laughs> we may not air this until December, so... This, this might be our uh, our Christmas episode. Um, I haven't... We haven't said what it is yet, right? I don't think we have. Okay, that's good. Let's keep it that way. Just a little bit longer. Like, so wait, like wait and see if they can figure Let's out what it is? See. We'll figure it out from the They'll, title. Well, or we could bury that, Ooh. too. It can be... Surprise. Yes. Hmm. So, with that note, cheers. What are we drinking? No, I thought we're, we're not going to say We're not even saying that. They have to we guess. Will. I was going to wait until after we, I was wait till after we <laughs> right. had a sip. This is fragrant. It's very, it's very pungent. It stings the nostrils. <laughs> yeah, you reacted almost as viscerally to this as you did to that garbage earlier. That garbage punched me in the face. I know. And you oh, this is pretty good. Too. So, we'll tell you about this one. This is a beer from Stone Brewing. It's stone backslash 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 fear dot movie dot lions. <laughs> I know I know that what I did was a faux pas for programmers. It's okay. Just I know I did it on purpose. But what is? What, I, it's got to get what, worse what, what, before it gets better. <laughs> can it? Can it get worse? What is happening? <laughs> You've ruined me today. Yeah, that's you, we're just gonna keep with you that. You've broken everything. So this is a double IPA. Uh, it's an unfiltered double IPA, eight point five percent alcohol by volume. It came in a pint. I'm gonna read you what's on the back of this because I'm as confused by this as I am as by what we just watched before. Great. There is a three, wonderful. There's a three meter by three meter square in our Richmond, Virginia brewery with these three words painted on it. What three words? Exactly. For the uninitiated, that's what three words. It's a global addressing system to bring locations to the previously unlocatable. Inspired by the positive impact of this system, we decided to name this IPA after a three meter square in the brewery where it was created. Check it out. So now, when someone says to you, what three words, you can re- you can reply with your own answer. If it's slash 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 fear dot movies dot lions we'll see you here i don't know what any of that means I, this is clearly some sort of inside oh it's as inside as possible to i guess stone pretty consistent yeah they're they're consistently good also right? i mean ipa they're, is their the name of their game they make yeah. like 80 different varieties of ipas double ipas they do a good job this is no exception it's yeah. tasty i enjoy it um, it's drinkable. Yeah, you know, it's actually, it might be dangerously drinkable yeah, for a double IPA. Yeah, yeah. for an 8.5, 8. 8. 5, it's going down pretty nice. And it doesn't have, even though like the the, um, the the nose of this beer is pretty aggressive, 
it's not overwhelmingly bitter. Right, which, which is, from which, that scent, that's what you would expect. Yeah, which, that can cause you to drink it a little slower, and the it's well-balanced, the hopping. It's not, like... No, it's, it's, it's nice. I, I do like it. Um, other than the flavor, I hate everything else about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly have no idea what any of that means. I don't know why the name, the backslashes. I'm... I'm broken. I got nothing. I don't even know where to go because you are right. This is coincidentally perfect for what we just yes. watched because what we just watched has an undertone of something that I love, a good IPA, but everything else about it could send you on a murderous rampage. Yeah. You know, not, you know it was even hard to read that thing on the back. It's a white can, which by the way, it's kind of cool, like industrial looking can it's on. a good looking can. can. It's a good looking can, but see, so they took a white background and then they put a reflective shiny silver. reflective silver text on it. Yeah, that was really difficult for me to read, especially with the light yeah, over you have my to, shoulder. You have to keep turning it. Yeah, yeah, I was like squinting and changing the angles because the light over my shoulder was putting glare. I was having a lot of trouble reading, which I don't think you'd be able to tell because I only stumbled once at the very end. I I. You're gonna have to bear with us on this episode. Mostly Anthony. I'm just I'm living, me. I'm I'm thriving on the anarchy right now, which you know what it is. Me. You knew going in some. I knew how, some how bad it was gonna get. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come a little bit clean. I read a fairly lengthy reaction piece to this. Mm-hmm. It was one of those things like with the hindsight of this movie having been out for a very long time, it was kind of an oral quest about like finding the movie getting people like you talked about the bad movie nights getting some people together to watch it hearing from other people across the internet talking about some people have traditions around this movie Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. every year at christmas they'll gather together and watch this movie together and and it was then a review of it talking about the highlights which there are none and the low lights which is nearly every minute of the runtime um and quote unquote what were they thinking when they made this movie thinking adorable uh, right, and you know, and well, more about the the story behind the production and how this got to air, plus some of the quirks, such as um, well, we still haven't even said what we watched yet. No. So um, that one thing that I tipped off to you right before it happened, and you said, "Oh my God, she's blitzed." Yeah, um, stuff like that was in this whole thing. So I had an idea. I've seen a couple little clips. I showed you one little clip of of this before. It's bad. So without further ado, I still ado, I, is, I was I was prepared in that sense reading all of that. Mm-hmm. I still underestimated how bad it was. Okay, I'm not going to give the title yet. We're not going to give the title in the in the write up of this. People are just going to have to figure it out as they get into this. I'm going to give the plot. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give the plot. This is a movie with. About 20 minutes of noise in the beginning. 20 minutes of dialogue no- in a language that you can't understand with no subtitles. It, no, it's not. No, it's not like it's noise and gesturing. Let, let, me, let me get through. It's, it's 20 minutes of noise and gesturing. Technically, it's a language. Followed by a, a grandfather jerking off in the living room in front of his grandchild. To VR porn. To VR porn. Followed by a 20 minute... Acid trip. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, I think I missed before the jerking off. Um, was a man dressed as a woman in blackface. A white man in drag and blackface. Yes. Teaching someone how to cook. Confusingly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we got the grandfather. Then we got the acid trip. You know, people who are aware of this, they're gonna have figured out what we're talking about. But the people who haven't figured it out, yeah. Or, I, I pity you. I'm so sorry. I'm not that sorry. We got the acid trip. Um, we've got some meaningless confrontation. Fair amount of it. Uh, confusing we sidebars. Have wildly confusing sidebars. We have just transitions to things that are... It's like, let's get this, sem- this famous person of the time to do something. And put it on screen. The thing is... Not famous of the time, Still like D-list right? still, still celebrities D-list for the, the time. time. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Um, a kerfuffle. Sure. Some a high, scream. Some, some hijinks. 
some hijinks, a scream, and a snow globe procession into midnight mass. Including previously naked adherents now being clothed. Now being clothed. And a pro- procession into light. Credits. Uh, credits. Awkward montage before the credits. Awkward montage. Of archive footage. Of historical documents. Of historical documents. Computer, show us the story. So, of course, what we're talking about is the Star Wars holiday special. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? That was, that, was the, that was the description. Clearly. We, I mean, we missed... Of the we, Star Wars holiday special. It was so bad it just did that to your voice? You hurt me. <laughs> I'm still hurt. <laughs> you knew. You knew what this was going to do to me. I had a feeling. It broke. Okay, you took something. You you somehow. Okay. Hey guys, <sighs> quick sidebar while he masters gathers his thoughts because he's not he's I'm struggling. Wounded. You know, maybe you like the new Star Wars movies. Maybe you like the Star Wars prequels. Maybe you don't. Maybe you have felt like they've been a mixed bag. I think if you watch this movie, you have an appreciation of what bad Star Wars actually looks like. Maybe everyone pumped the brakes a little bit on bitching and moaning about a movie that did things you didn't like, but at least are functional and coherent. Mm, mm. This is like and a, still true to a lot of what Star Wars is like is a all public about. service announcement? I yes. like this. This is good. As opposed to a travesty so rich, because it's been made so cheaply, that it completely confuses any semblance of what Star Wars is all about, is wildly incoherent and i don't understand why it exists i don't understand how it no i understand why it exists because i read about that i don't understand how it exists um because we can get into that yeah basically the history of this was that there was there was medium expectations for the original star wars coming out and when it became a wild success they quickly greenlit couple of sequels but george lucas was busy doing other stuff and said yeah i'll I'll come back but it's gonna take a while to make the movie on top of my other projects so the powers of be said okay well we'd like to keep fans interested so the next year they wanted something to tide everyone over keep them first and foremost thinking about star wars so they greenlit a holiday special in the winter of 1978 that had the most tangential involvement of George Lucas in the making. Basically, he didn't contribute in any way, shape, or form. They just gave him a bunch of things that they said they were going to do. And he said, yeah, sure, go ahead, have fun, because he was too busy. Um, they got most of the principles from the movies in, though they had very little screen time. The majority of this is other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and by other people, I mean people dressed up as Wookiees and grunting and... Yeah. Lumpy. Lumpy. Cranky Kong. <laughs> there was Lumpy, <laughs> Chewbacca's son. There was Mala, Chewbacca's wife, and there was Itchy, his father. Pervert, pervert Wookie. Pervert Wookie, and we'll get to that. But it's Star Wars, as you know, as the listeners know, something very near and dear to my heart. Me too. You can make. You could have made a bad Star Wars movie, and I would find the good in it. Yeah, right. you did. You you still watch the prequels, right? I, yeah, I still watch, I, and I, I I enjoy them. This hurt that. Like well, this brought that down. The, this actually, this gave me negative feelings towards Star Wars. Yeah, ep- see, episode one and two before. are both objectively bad movies, but they both still contain things that a remind you, hey, this is Star Wars, mm-hmm. and b things that you can genuinely enjoy. Yeah, pieces that stand out above the greater mess of the movie. Mm-hmm. This had none of those things. This had one 30-second glimmer of hope, and it was a very sweet scene of Han Solo giving Nala a hug. Is it Nala or Mala? Mala. Nala's from the Lion King. Yes, correct. Mala, Chewbacca's wife. Correct. Perfect. Great. <laughs> and he came in. He gave her a hug, and it was it was touching for a second. And only, I, and only, I, only person not mailing it in, and then, which is what blows me away about it. That's the if I'm although ever the optimist, the thing that I'm going to take away positively is if this was Han, this was Han Solo, this was Harrison Ford. 
being a consummate professional. Yeah. Up until the very end, I don't know if you noticed during the life day ceremony, they did one shot of his face. He looked like he wanted to kill everyone. Well, time. during life day, I, I imagine by that point, Carrie Fisher had shared her stash with him. True. She was... Blitzed. Yeah, I... I mean, the worst of it was the very first <laughs> couple lines she said on screen. Oh, you're wasted. <laughs> she is so clearly drunk and or high out of her mind. Mm. It's like, it's not even a question. I feel like she's talking directly into a camera that isn't there. <laughs> right? She's looking. She's. <laughs> she actually it's, rebounded a little bit after that. She did. I don't know if they like took off for six hours and said get sober and then come back and shoot the rest of the scene. Yeah. It feels like it feels like she's got like split vision because she's zonked, right? Yeah. And she's looking at She stumbled a she's little looking bit. She got up from behind a cameraman in her vision. She got up behind from behind a desk and walked in front of the desk. She stumbled a bit. Yeah. She slurred once. It's it's a bit much. Yeah. And it, what I <laughs> Oh my god, it's just so that's great. And I just I looked at you, I was like, Oh, like because you had you had mentioned earlier about like her being drunk of points. Yeah. I didn't know it was gonna be the first point at which we see yeah, her. Yeah, I didn't either. Also, the makeup <laughs> in this movie. Especially on Luke. Can you call it a movie? Uh well, so first of all, the way I would I was thinking about it, the way I would best describe Luke's look in this movie is you know Mac in Always Sunny? You know his mom? Yeah. That, that yeah. His look was mo- his mom if his mom was 25 instead of 55. He had about three inches thick of foundation on his face. Yeah, he had eyeliner and on. And eyeliner. But the hair and the way his, his, the shape of his face, he looked just like Mac's mom if Mac's mom was much younger. It looked, it looked very much like a wax figure come to life. A wax <laughs> figure of Mark Hamill... I think that's also might have been the last time he was on. It might have been the last time he was on screen pre-accident, fucking up his face. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Or he was shooting another was movie. It, or was it really screwed up? And that's why the makeup was so bad. No, his face, because you can see it. It's uh, it's it's on his left cheekbone. You can see yeah. it's, it's and, and around his left eye is where the the surgery was. His face, his real face, looked as bad as. Han Solo's fake face when he was animated. <laughs> oh my god, it was so bad. <laughs> you know what it reminded me of? Easter Island. Yes. <laughs> but only because that also reminds me of this other thing I was going to bring up. Do you remember in the It movie, the painting? Yep. He looked like the painting. He did. He did. Which also looked like an Eastern Island head. I was watching something like two nights ago where that came up you look like you look like the painting in it oh really <laughs> yeah and i just can't remember what it was actually i think i what what was that from that sounds familiar that line sounds familiar what were you watching i have no idea this was last night you said no you were, I, you were no i think it was like two nights ago oh oh it was the flash oh uh, i was watching I the flash and that's what and unless maybe dominic told me about that. ralph uh he's got like he can stretch and his face was like all contorted and Cisco says, "You look like the painting from it." <laughs> and I was like, that's like, it was spot on. But no, you're a hundred. Yeah, that's exactly what he looked like. He was horrified. What? What? What happened? I don't know. Like what? Like all their faces look terrible. C three PO for some reason didn't have a neck. His neck was like a telescoping like cord. Yeah. And like his head. Well, was so like... were his hips. Yeah, C three PO had very feminine hips. Very feminine motions too. Well, that's not really surprising character but no but it was it was like he was like like the way that he was like flailing his hands and arms about yes i i will reiterate the statement i just made also neither 3po or r2d2 were animated as robots they were animated very flexible yes r2d2 would bend a lot i don't think i noticed that in the midsection (laughs) he's a tin can you bend in the midsection. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> what did I just watch, Al? <laughs> well, it was also the introduction to Boba Fett, friend. That's right. Friend. 
this you come away from this movie saying definition of friend asshole <laughs> right sure right Boba Fett's a friend riding Nessie Boba Fett comes swooping and riding Space Nessie. Nessie apparently the front end of a Y wing is also the is escape detachable pod. and of also a boat floating on was it Jello it reminded me of gelatin. It was a planet of gelatin. It was a gelatin planet, yeah. That the the Falcon kind of just drove, drove into and then surfaced. Yeah, because like when a the, submarine. Because when the planet, yeah, but that was a little confusing. Because when the when the, the ship hit the planet, this is why I say gelatin mm-hmm. because he hit it and then it kind of like swelled yeah. and like swallowed it up. Yeah. And then when it settled, the the ship came back up out of the jello. Or so you thought, but really, it was apparently activating the, the life rafts. Oh yeah, the pontoons that are underneath. The Go-Go Falcon the pontoons. Right. <laughs> this is all cartoons, which uh, just randomly Lumpy was watching a cartoon because I knew there was a cartoon section that introduced Boba Fett. I didn't I'd never seen it before. Right. I, didn't know what it was. I always wondered how the fuck does the, the does the movie just turn into a cartoon? At least there was context. Yeah. He was watching a cartoon. Although who made that cartoon? Yeah. Why was there a cartoon of his rebel father and his father's friends and then being backstabbed and betrayed by an agent of the empire why was there a cartoon of that who made that yeah who made that why was luke wearing his his festive outfit yeah he was wearing his festive outfit from the award ceremony at the end of uh a new hope i don't understand that his face was an upside down triangle yeah at least it was kind of almost recognizable as luke skywalker han solo was, was a face of chins yeah, I just don't understand. And the great thing is, like, you didn't see Han's face until the very end. Yeah. So I had no idea. Like, you see him off in the distance. Hanging upside hanging down. Upside down actually, as you do. As you do. Um, and you don't see his face until the end. And the second he was, like, cut down from the rope and, like, picked his head up and, like, brushed his hair majestically out of his face, it's like... His face is What broken. is up with his face? Why does it look like you were hit with a steel bat? <laughs> I just Repeatedly. I don't understand. <laughs> Um, well, going back to makeup and, and, and yeah, please. Uh, well, and I'm makeup. So I'm all over the goddamn costume, place right now. Did you notice Leia and her hair? She had the buns yeah. from the original one, but did you notice that they were clearly clip-ons because her ear was poking out of one of them? I did not. Glad they was. <laughs> Because <laughs> really happy. Now I'm I'm second guessing myself, but you don't see her ears in A New Hope, right? Her hair is over her ears, right? Fully over, fully over. Yeah, her ear was clearly like this much of her ear was poking out of one side of the hair. Um, well, you know what it was? She was probably sloshed. I'm sure she went to like brush her hair, before, or yeah. like, or maybe it was when she was grabbing up on Peter Mayhew at the end. She was getting real close to Chewie at the end there. Yeah, and it was uncomfortable. Which also is a uh, common trait of during midnight mass being sloshed, you know, while she added words. Oh, by the way, Star Wars. We the official lyricization of the Star Wars theme, and B. Arthur gave us the lyrics to the Cantina song. That's true, but at a much slower tempo. Yes, it was like the smooth jazz version. What? First of all, B. Arthur. Second of all, super rating. How is she making money? She's giving all those drinks away all the time. A free round to the entire place. To get them all to leave. Right. Typically, if you give a round, it's so they'll stay and buy more. Right. I'll give you a round. If you'll leave. And then you'll go home. Very confusing. Very No wonder why. Frustrated. No wonder why the, the Galactic Empire crumbled. Can we talk no about sense. the 20-minute porno in the kaleidoscope? We can. I don't understand much like the rest of this movie, but the weird family friend whose name I never quite caught. He's the traitor. Which it, Freight traitor. It sounded a lot like they were saying like traitor like over and <laughs> over again. But uh so he gives the grandfather this little chip and he like goes so, what does he say? He says something about it like I think you'll really like you'll, this. Yeah. Mm-hmm, like yeah, then he followed like, up and made, he like, made some sort of like, he goes, 
oh, I think you'll really enjoy this if you know what I mean. Right. I think just, that's what he said. Just so that in the next scene, if he didn't say that, the next scene might not have been as blatant as it was. It would have just been even more confusing. But you're like, what does he mean? And then you see it. Oh, that's porn. Yep. That's Wookiee porn, which is apparently a... Not, not a Wookiee. A female human. Yep. Singing. Also speaking very suggestively. About how adorable he is. Yep. Adorable. 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 Oh, adorable. yeah, that was fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, that's... I what, mean, it was all weird, but that was... That's about the time Craigie Tom came. I believe, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, the best part was, a couple of hours before we... Or an hour before we watched it, I told you there was Wookiee porn. Yep. And you didn't believe it. No. I didn't. And you're I like, you no, were, stop it. You're... I thought you were still joking. Like, I thought you were joking before about things that would happen in this. No, everything I told you happened. Everything that you told me happened. Uh, I tried to win. And you. somehow, I think that was worse <laughs> than not knowing going in. I believe I said, there's Wookiee porn. And you said, no, there's not. I no, said, oh, I guess I was wrong. No. Nah. Nah. Except, no, I'm not. <laughs> in a kaleidoscope. She said the words... I am your experience. Experience me. Yeah. Experience me. I'm your pleasure. Repeatedly. And suggestively. Which was only slightly more suggestive than Harvey Corman in Blackface and Drag saying, swish it, beat it. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> whip, whip, stir, whip, stir, whip, whip, beat, stir. Beat, <laughs> beat, beat, stir. <laughs> what? <laughs> That at least made me laugh. Because <laughs> that was actually pretty it was funny. Because, like, you, we were talking about this earlier. It was almost like an episode of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mm-hmm. Right? It, it felt like improv. Yeah, and, and it fit the, the, the Whose Line thing to a T, considering they play that game where Colin puts his arms mm-hmm. under Ryan and mm-hmm. functions as his arm because all of a sudden Harvey Corman has three arms and then four arms, yeah. and only two of them are his. And someone's li- the fourth arm, which is not his, is ladling soup. Into, into his, his mouth, which is exactly no, no, not his a, mouth, but into his, into his face. face, which is exactly <laughs> something they do in his line. When they always put some sort of food or yeah. drink, and they make Colin feed it to water, Ryan, yeah. it always ends up all over his yep. face and body. It was, I mean, that part was silly, and that made me laugh at least. Genuinely funny, but at the unfortunate expense of, I was still so confused that I couldn't appreciate it as much at the time. Yeah, um, he was doing a comedic take at Medea, so I can understand being your being confused <laughs> or is Medea is Medea based on that character from I, the Star I, Wars I special doubt it. I hope it is I highly I doubt hope it. it is I hope this is just something that we've stumbled <laughs> well you'll know if, if Tyler Perry ever gets cast in a Star Wars movie then we'll probably have a decent indication that it was because it probably means that he's been a big fan I, I want this to be, happen <laughs> I want this to be the case it was like an impression of Medea by way of Martha Stewart, but yeah. comedy. Yep. Fever dream. Yep. This whole thing was a corporate fever dream. Chomping bantha loins. <laughs> does how, about, like, how about doesn't this? he like cradle the bantha loins? He's of like, all he's the... like, oh, the tenderest cut, and he like sniffs it, and it looks like he was about to like snuggle it. Yeah. Yeah, he also ate a significant amount of the ingredients before he would throw them into the pot. Yeah, I think he said one for me, one for you, yeah, one for like me, that. one for the stew. Let's talk about one. <laughs> Let's talk about one thing that was real sad. Um, one of the one of the garbage stormtroopers ripped the bantha head off the toy, and then Lumpy laid him to rest. Yeah, and it was weirdly touching. Here's a fun thing. People complained about them adding the blinking to the Ewoks, right? No thing. To the Ewoks? I think the, in the in like re- the Return of the Jedi like special editions. What blinking? They blink now, I think. Oh, was that previously th- not a thing? I believe that's an added thing. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, if if that is a thing that you're upset about, watch this because there's a there's an aggressive lack of blinking. Coupled with... On Lumpy's part. Coupled with the aggressive movements of his mouth bearing his teeth. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to haunt my dreams forever. 
I mean, when I looked up the title Star Wars Holiday Special and showed you the first picture that came up was just a picture of his face like... Yeah, because you know why? Staring into yourself. There's a, like a 20 second cut where the camera cuts to him and that's what he's doing. He's not making noise. He's not moving. He's baring his teeth and his eyes are wide and that's it. There's no context. There's no reason for it. It's almost First as all, if, there's no reason for most of this. It's almost as if they were trying to film the scene and they cut to like camera two. But camera two was just laid on the table next to this costume. And they just left it in. There's several things. Speaking of things left in. <laughs> that guy forgets his line. Yes, that's what I was yeah. just going to talk about. <laughs> Talking about things that feel like improvisation. There is, you know, on top of them not redoing the scene where where Leia is clearly wasting. <laughs> is the scene when the traitor guy comes into the thing and he says. With the deepest of V-necks. Hey, oh, the V-neck was to his belly button. It was and he's fat. And he was fat. And he was fat. <laughs> like he had a beer gut and he had a V-neck. Yeah. The deepest of V's. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> and he comes in and says to Itchy, hey, I got your proton, proton pack for the, the thingy. The what's my call it? The, uh, and then he says the thing. Like mind incinerator. Yeah. Oh, the, the mind yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, the, he clearly forgot his line and they left it and in the movie yeah, and played it off going. as some sort of like Oh, he's just a doddering old man. It's cute. No, no, he a hundred percent did not remember his line there. I just don't. <laughs> I just don't understand. I just. You told me what happened. You told me how this got made. But I still feel the question was not answered. Right? Like when they when it flashed across the screen, I believe there were five writers. What did they write though? The, the dialogue was terrible. There's also what that dialogue. <laughs> there's also that secret that sequence where the imperial officers come to the house. Snappy McGee. He's he's on screen wandering around aimlessly yeah. for like three minutes before, before he says a, a word. word, and then he, when first prompted to say a word, he doesn't. He snaps his fingers to a guy who's standing directly in front of him, addressing him. Yeah. And the stormtroopers would point their guns directly at people's faces. Not just that, but... And it's weird. He, like, brandished it at at one of the Wookiees when he first walks in the door. I, yeah. I didn't... Like, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what was happening. I don't... Why were they there again? We don't really know. Rebel stuff. <laughs> Lots of Empire stuff. Over here. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, like, like, well, because again, they didn't say why they, they came in. No one says why they're there. And eventually it was, we got rebel activity. And we have to kill time before Solo arrives. They killed so much time. Yeah. I mean, it was like a 13 minute scene with three Wookiees speaking in Wookiee. Yeah. With no subtitles. Yeah. I, it went on way too long. Like, it's like, oh, okay, this has been going on for a couple of minutes. It was like the Family Guy thing on steroids. Yeah, man. I mean. Except it never got funny again. It never got funny at all. That too. Um, within, like, I, we were sitting back and watching it for like 20 minutes and it's just like, man, I'm, I'm bored. Yeah. Like, this is, this is rough. This is one of those movies that like, you know, it's like, oh, it's so bad, it's good. That only happened a couple of times during this. Mostly it was so bad, it was bad. Yeah. There's a few things that were like, so bad, it was worse. you laughed at because it's so bad. And it's just like you laughing in, in, in disbelief. But there was too much of, that wasn't even funny to laugh at and there's i felt ashamed i felt dirty <laughs> when it was over yeah it was just you looked like you looked like someone punched you in the face it was no good you look of horror at me occasionally during it man i'm sure there were you I, you probably should have looked at my face while i was watching it i can't imagine what it was like I, uh... it's pure fear <laughs> Uh, there was a good. I, I'm pretty sure there was a. Uh, well, was it was it when B. Arthur almost got raped by that creepy guy? In what the, most in the hell? Most Eisley Cantina. What was his name? I don't know. It was like Kremlin. Something like that. He's drinking through his head. Yeah, through the top of his head. The top of his head. Where you know his hair was moving completely independently of his face. Which was a great a great thing. So you and I are both watching this scene. We're like, why is his head moving independent of his hair? And then he drinks by pouring it through the hole in the top of his head. And you're like, oh. It was almost before our sentence like was like our conversation oh. was done too. As if that makes <clears throat> sense. We said, 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> He's a volcano. <laughs> like, what, what was that? <laughs> The slow, the slow cantina song, I could get behind. I like the little tempo change. Yeah, I'm, I was surprised how much you liked that. <laughs> I mean, the, actually, the best part about it was at the end when it's shown that they were all watching it on the screen, and you were like, "Wait a minute, they were watching that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that didn't make any sense because they, yeah, they were in the house still. Um, also, how it faded to black right before. The Arthur almost got raped because she was now alone with the creepy guy at her bar. Oh, right, right, right. She brought everybody around. They left. She finally, Naturally. like the Pied Piper, got them all to leave. Right. She was singing. She sang. She started a conga line. Started a conga line. Brought them out, out the door. Came back in. He was waiting. Was, it probably didn't go well after that. Yes. They fade to black as we realize that the two of them are alone. Right. Right. Who she's been asking to leave. That was unsettling. Who was grabbing up on her earlier against her will. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Oh no! Happy Life Day. So, in the, thinking back on it, it makes it so much more confusing than it already was. Oh, by the way, guys, we've been giving you, like, almost a shot for shot of the whole thing. We haven't actually told you what this whole movie was about. It was about Han smuggling Chewie back to Suya's family for a holiday. Right, Life Life Day. Life Day. That's what the movie was about. And all these things that we've described to you have nothing to do with any of that. No. Uh, nothing. Except for the this gift that I'm about to talk about. <laughs> which was just a vessel for Jefferson Starship. Mm-hmm. But the context was it this he gave this gift to Mal. Mm-hmm. Are we supposed to assume she likes this band? It was the most popular good... music on Kashyyyk at the time. Did he say that? No, you did. I said that from the Wikipedia article. Yeah, exactly. That <laughs> but, <laughs> but he, like, he got, what was that, first off? The hollow band? Is that what that is? Mm-hmm. The hollow band? The hologram band? One of those. Oh, and that's what they're called, canonically. Okay. Oh. And what is it? The hologram band? band. Oh, it's... Oh, it's literally just that. Like, you open it. And that wasn't Jefferson Starship. That was the hologram, man. Got it. Got it. He... Okay, so it was singing a hologram. Into, singing into a pink dildo. Singing into a pink dildo. Double-sided. Okay. Yeah, a Darth Maul dildo. Yeah. yeah, pink. Pink Darth Maul dildo. <laughs> I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense, right? And uh, he... <laughs> he play, and he played that for one of the Imperial officers. Yeah, for like so you're really gonna like seven this. minutes. And he, yeah, it lasted entirely too long, much mm-hmm. like this movie. And he, yeah, it was a long movie. Is an hour and like thirty six minutes. Yeah, something like that. It was weird. Well, when you try to have, and we didn't even have to see it with commercials. I remember the, oh, the you almost panicked when you thought that 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 break almost two thousand away from the movie. You thought it was the first the commercial. First one I noticed because we watched it uninterrupted. Yeah. Maybe that's what you needed. Maybe you needed the interruptions. Maybe that <laughs> to get up and, and do some more acid before maybe, the next. Yeah, maybe to wash yourself of the filth <laughs> before returning for the second round. I felt like Han's face <laughs> after that was over. <laughs> I'll never be able to look at Star Wars the same way. I don't know how you didn't notice the commercial break with the one time where they zoomed in on Lumpy's face. But they did a bad job of doing like the freeze frame cut, and it was just like he turned and was just like frozen for like eight seconds before it went to black. Oh, that was just par for the course. I didn't know that was. Yeah, no, that was that was one of the commercial breaks. Um, (laughs) It's like they forgot to turn the camera off. (laughs) So here's a question. (laughs) Actually, that would have been perfect in the context of the question you asked: Was did they shoot this live? Right. Other than the animated parts and the cutaway parts. Right. right. It, 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 oh, hello. <laughs> Chickpea is saying hello to the audience. <laughs> um, so at the end, during the Life Day celebration. <laughs> Just picturing the, like, you know how they do, like, the, the live, like, like Broadway, like, type shows or whatever, like, remake things on, like, NBC and Fox now? Mm-hmm. I'm just picturing that like this had having been aired shot live and, like, someone forgot to turn the camera off and that's why it was just frozen on... Yep. For a minute. Yeah. 
<laughs> he says something like wildly inappropriate or racist because he doesn't know his mic's still on. He just turns around and says, get this fucking thing yeah, off of me yeah. he takes the hat off. <laughs> That'd be amazing. We forgot about something. What? I'll, can, I'll give you a guess. I don't know. Cirque du Soleil? <laughs> I did forget about that. What was that? I don't know. What was that? It wasn't... A little green fairy dancing on the table. And then there was... Well, more holograms. And then there were more... Ho- no, it was started off with just him. Yeah. And then more came in. And then he hit a button on what was clearly a tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> and the hologram got bigger. And now danced around in the room while the rest of the acrobats jumped around on the table. Yeah, that's true. Um, And then that ended... That was a pretty long scene, too. And the movie continued. Yep. That was still before any words were... Well, there was... We had, like, eight words spoken by Han... In the beginning, yeah. Before the almost 15 minutes of uninterrupted Wookiee. Also, at the very beginning of the movie, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away... I didn't even get the font thing In right. a horrible font, in the wrong color, on too many lines... With bad kerning. Um, that thing was... that. Actually, I'll give them a pass on that because that was probably because it was put directly on TV and not put on a movie screen. Mm-hmm. They probably did have to change the way the script Oh, was. so that, that explains the, the dope-ass effect on Star Wars, right? <laughs> no, like just the, the a long time ago thing. It trigger that they did there? <laughs> it was like a... It was like one of those it TV like commercials. Star Wars knocked out, and they flipped it so that it wasn't knocked out, and they flipped it back and forth like twelve times so it looked like the font was changing size, but it wasn't. It was just the outline, <laughs> and my eyes were bril- were I, like melting. I was thinking face. of the much like Chewbacca's right <laughs> eye at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean what right eye? He didn't have one. Exactly. That was the scene that you had alluded to earlier, where the where at Life Day Celebration naturally, and the camera pans to Chewbacca, and. It's focused on his face, and I'm like, one of his eyes isn't there. And then we get into his mind, and I guess he's reliving a new hope, because we see a new hope in 30 seconds. Yeah, they do a a montage of, like, a bunch of the action scenes, and also random other scenes. And then they zoom out of, of his... Of his non-eye. That's where the camera pulled out from. <laughs> so I guess we zoomed in through his eye to get to his brain to see these scenes. And then we pull out of his eye sock. Yep. As it were. The weird thing is, it's not even like it was just a shadow. Because his left eye is very clearly articulated. <laughs> the right eye, eye just doesn't... Let me brandish my eye. <laughs> wow, it's so perfect to hear all of this. That was what it was. We fought a Wookiee. Mm. Remove the eye to thus be brandished later on. Got it. That's that's a super inside joke that you guys don't need to know it's about. All good. I think this whole show was an inside joke This that we watched. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they were like, oh, you don't want to be involved? Okay. Maybe somebody had it out for him. Maybe somebody had it out for Lucas. And was like, that oh. have to be way down the line, though, because the whole point was they dragged him back kicking and screaming because they needed to do this to keep people interested in Star Wars. Honestly, I said this while we were watching. Maybe he made it such a pain in the ass. He did. That they did it this way. Yeah, I don't think it was done vindictively. Maybe. Are you sure? You sure I'm they sure that they. You know, his whole career. <laughs> I'm sure they knew before it went to air. Oh my God, this sucks. What have, what have we done? Yes, I'm my sure. God, what have we done? But I think it was like a runaway train where it was too late to stop it. That they were promoing it and that it already was a thing that existed. They only ever aired it one time in the U.S. One time. And then never again. Huh. It was aired more times internationally. Interesting. And George Lucas is on the record, and i was just too lazy to go find the quote right now, but he said to paraphrase him something to the effect of, it's so bad that I wish I could go around the world and destroy every copy with my own two hands so that no one would ever see it again. Mm-hmm. We watched it, the whole thing on YouTube. It had, he brought this on himself by not paying attention. Yeah, I don't know if he's involved, it would have just been bad instead of being that. I honestly, we, we talked about, I, this This could have ended Star Wars more effectively anything, than anything. Yeah. Like, people are complaining about, it. like, oh no, Solo, like, didn't make $2 billion at the box office. That's nothing compared to this. And it's 1.7 million views on YouTube. Yeah. 
And I'm sure there's other, I mean, I know there's clips on YouTube. There's hey, other forms of it. If you do drugs, can you write us and let us know what your experience is when you watch this? Because I just imagine that's the only reason just, it's got so many views. If this is inspiring you to go and watch it, which you should if you're a big Star Wars fan, or you want to subject someone to torture, or... If you want to have a good time, play this and with someone. Yeah, watch it with and, people. And don't watch it. Watch the person watch it. Because I think that'll be more enjoyable. Drink, drink maybe enjoy <laughs> some extracurriculars. Get on the same level as Gary. Don't Fisher. enjoy that <laughs> many extracurriculars because it may melt your brain. <laughs> Much like Chewie's eye. Much like Chewie's eye. Is that what happened? Did the eye fall out of like a... <laughs> Actually, it would have been so much. It would have been so much better if they were shooting it and you clearly see like the eye fall out of the thing, and like they or just, like it's looking down, like it's not. No, it's no, just I'm not just like, like the, the thing just like pops out of the mask, <laughs> <laughs> and like they, like no one noticed except for Peter Mayhew, and he's staying in character, and no one who's shooting realizes it's going on. But while you watch it, and like no one would notice it during the editing, but they watch it on air, it's like oh my god, the eye fell out. How did we put this on the screen? <laughs> or Chewie just slowly picks it up off the floor and puts it back in its face. <laughs> Even better. Actually, because considering the hair on the mask, if the eye fell out, it was just like stuck to his yeah. face. And he just... Like a googly eye? Yeah. He just picks it up. It <laughs> oh my god. The, uh, yeah. The, uh, Han gave him, Han gave him a warm embrace before he left. Which, I don't know where he went, because they were all there at, at a... Uh, speaking of warm embraces, did you catch that creepy fucking line when I don't... Give us a kiss. No, that one. <laughs> not that one. I don't remember if it was when Luke was talking to them through the video conference thing, or if it was when Leia was talking to them. Someone... Luke blaming R2 for all his shit. It was when C-3PO... Yeah, I was fucked up. When C-3PO oh. and Leia were talking... To Mala, and the traitor guy was there, mm -hmm. and she says, which also was kind of fucked up. Hey, is it? She's like, hey, is there anyone else there that I could talk to? Maybe a friend or something. Yeah. <laughs> and they bring the human on screen, and she puts her arm around him, and she says something, and and C three PO goes, allow me. She's describing the him and her warmth for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? Oh, like, Chewie's out of town. No one can find him. And she's got her arm around this guy and is talking about how the warmth that she feels for this man is a little fucking creepy. That's yeah, creepy. You know what else is creepy? <laughs> the amount of time we spend in the trader's post and him showing off the Hawk Aquarium. And the personal groomer. And the personal groomer. And that guy, your that guy who was clearly hair, a robot. Teeth. It can recite the penal code. All 17 volumes. All 17 volumes of the penal code. My little, my little Wookiee is meowing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was a really long scene. That, no, you know what? That was crucial backstory to introduce it to the traitor. Actually. name I don't understand. But Deep V. That guy... <laughs> that, that guy Hans V was a little deeper than usual, too, I thought. But that, I feel like he also had one three-quarter sleeve and one sleeve that was rolled up. It was like... It was like he was standing <laughs> outside the door and was like... What, like what would like laid back Han at home like okay yeah, let me roll up the sleeves yeah, yeah. when did he ever roll up his fucking sleeves in the Star yeah. Wars movie rolls up the sleeve and like by the time he was given his cue to walk through the door didn't finish the second sleeve <laughs> and what was with the cockpit which was clearly not the Millennium Falcon cockpit yeah. that was also clearly shading a lot of it that you couldn't see it right like the lighting was really bad so that you couldn't see all of it also, what that lighting did was not let you see exactly where Han's hand was. Um, yeah, it looked like he was getting frisky with Chewie. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like his hand was in his lap, but a little bit too much towards the center. And it was right after he, like... It's like we were Congratulated escaped. him oh. on something, like... Yeah. Congratulated him. <laughs> um, they... I still... I gotta go back to it, because I still... For whatever reason, this one... What were this... I don't understand the snow globes and the ropes... There was like a snow globe in each of their hands and it transported them through time and space to a place where their friends were that they just left one of them. And there was a celebration. They all wore robes. Because that's, that's what you do on Life Day. You wear a red robe. That was the part of this movie you didn't understand? 
Yeah. <laughs> I guess everything else is just a day in the life. And then Yeah, no, I was confused by that too, because like Han's like, I gotta go. Right. And then all of a sudden they're holding snow globes. Which okay. And then wait, 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 there was wait, a wait. bright light, and then all of them were walking across space into yeah. a bright light. Into the sun. Which was really bad CGI. Yep. And then CGI. all of a sudden Han is there, along with C3PO and R2D2. And Leia. And Leia, and Leia and Luke. And stock footage of Obi-Wan. And stock footage of Obi-Wan, that's true. That's true. Lots of stock footage in this. And then after that, they were at the dinner table. Oh, yeah. And they were like, oh, wait, no, we have one more scene. And they were back. This thing had more endings than Lord of the Rings. And then they, <laughs> then they walked. <laughs> then they continued to walk to the sun. No, I think they Is walked back they, out of the sun. They walked out of the sun. And somewhere in there was that weird montage in Chewie's eyeball. Eye socket? Eye socket. Brain. Eye brain? It was in his brain. Yeah. Went through the eye. It was in his brain. Projected outward. Um... Man, <laughs> that was that was a trip. Yeah, it was a lot of things. I th- it was necessary. We had to do this. Wait a minute. What were the cookies called? Oh, weren't they the were they the Wookie cookies or the the Wookie cookies? Wookie cookies. They were the Wookie cookies. Wookie cookies. <laughs> and with that, we bid you adieu. <laughs> <laughs> the Wookie. Hope you enjoyed the holiday episode of Flux of the Six. We're out. (laughs) We're out. We're done. Merry Christmas.